Here are about seven more paragraphs expanding the HAL Tejas MK2 2025 proposed explanation with technical detail in layman friendly language, drawing on available public sources. Some figures or estimates are projections, since full performance data isn't released yet. Dash, dash, dash. The Tejas MK2's propulsion system is one of its centerpiece upgrades. The aircraft will use the General Electric F414 INS6 after burning turbofan engine capable of generating about 98 kN of thrust with afterburner. That is a notable increase over the older F404 engine used in Tejas MK1, MK1A. More thrust means better acceleration, better climb rates, and the ability to carry heavier loads, such as more weapons, more fuel, and additional avionics or sensors, without compromising performance. There is also discussion of developing an indigenous engine rated around 110 kN in future, which may further improve the thrust-to-weight ratio. Internally the aircraft is larger, its length is projected at about 14.60 to 14.65 meters, wingspan about 8.50 meters, and height roughly 4.86 minus 4.87 meters. Its empty weight, just the aircraft without fuel, Weapons etc. is expected in the region of 7,850 kg, gross weight around 11,300 kg, and maximum takeoff weight MTOW about 17,500 kg. Putting that in layman's terms, this aircraft is significantly bulkier than the MK-1, which means it can carry more fuel and weapons. Fuel capacity is also much larger inside the airframe, with about 3,400 kg of internal fuel. When external drop tanks are fitted, that capacity increases further, some sources project total fuel plus drop tank fuel around 3,500 kg extra. This allows longer flight times without refueling. In practical terms, increased fuel capacity extends both combat range, how far you can go into a mission and return safely, and ferry range, how far you can travel without combat or with external tanks. As for top speed and altitude, MK2 is expected to fly at speeds up to Mach 1.8 under favorable conditions. Mach 1.8 means approximately 1.8 times the speed of sound which varies depending on altitude and temperature. Service ceiling, the maximum altitude at which it can operate effectively, is projected at around 17,300 meters, about 56,757,000 feet. The G limits, how much acceleration, deceleration forces in turns etc. are anticipated to be plus 9, minus 3.5, indicating strong maneuverability. On weaponry and payload, Tejas MK2 will have roughly 11 to 13 external hardpoints, and a payload capacity of about 6,500 kg that is weapons, bombs, missiles etc. It will carry a 30mm cannon, some sources say a GSH-30-1 or similar. The aircraft is designed for multirole missions, air-to-air -air combat, air-to-ground strikes, reconnaissance, and possibly maritime strike roles. Integration with indigenous weapons like Astra missile, possibly Brahmos ing, glide bombs, precision-guided munitions etc. are planned. Sensors such as the UTAM AESA radar, an indigenous IRST infrared search and track system, and electronic warfare countermeasures systems are part of the package to give the pilot improved situational awareness and survivability. Since this is a military aircraft, there is no battery charging in the way an electric car has. Power for avionics, sensors, mission computers etc. comes from onboard generators driven by the engines and from backup systems. Fuel is what powers the engines. Performance tests, speed versus altitude, acceleration, climb rate will occur during flight test phases. Projections put the combat range of the MK2 around 1,500 km, meaning it can fly that far on a combat mission with standard weapons load, while ferry range with drop tanks is much greater, estimates around 3,500 km. Regarding cost and when you might actually see these jets in service, there is no definitive public fly away price, per Tejas MK2 yet. Development is being funded by the Indian government, and costs are expected to be substantial due to R&D, advanced electronics, weapons integration, engine costs, and supply chain work. Some analyses suggest that if large orders are placed, economies of scale could bring down cost per aircraft. Prototype rollout is expected in late 2025, 
first flight perhaps early to mid-2026, serial production and induction possibly starting toward 2028-2029. But these dates are subject to change due to testing delays, supply chain challenges or certification processes. Dash dash dash. If you want, I can try to assemble a very detailed specification sheet with all available projections and even compare with competitor jets to help viewers understand how MK2 stacks up globally.